In this video, we're going to focus on the formatter for the custom labels. So we have the labels, but maybe you would like to customize them. And luckily, we can do this with a formatter functionality that is built in into the Chart.js 3 plugin. So let's scroll down here and just go back here into our labels. Then within our labels, what we're going to use here now is a formatter functionality. Then here again, we're going to say CTX, which stands for context. We're going to make this a callback. We're going to put an arrow or a uh, function expression arrow. Then within here, we're going to now put in something. So what I want to do for now is just do very straightforward a console log and say CTX. Just check and understand what is in here. So if I refresh here, here now the return value of this is nothing. And this is why it doesn't show any values. However, if I open up my console log, we can get a whole object here. And let's click on one of these. You can see here a lot of information. You can see the data index and the index, and we get all the information that we need. So if I would hover over this here, you should see that this should be the last item in here. There we are. So what I want to note here, this is very important, or I'll show you later on. Let's start to draw something in here, or at least create something. So I'm going to say return. And then what I'm going to say here now is I want to grab, for example, here the uh, the raw value or the value itself, which is ctx and dot raw dot v. So I'm going to do that one. The ctx dot raw dot v. And if I just only do this, you will see it just gets again back the original value. But now I want to do something else some more. So I'm going to use here template literals so we can easily use concatenation. So again here, on your keyboard, or at least on your Mac keyboard, below the escape button, the, you have here the back ticks. So I'm going to see here dollar sign, put in this, and put in that there. All right, so if I save this and refresh, nothing really happens here, it's just all same. But now I can say here, the value is. Save that. Now we have additional information here. Of course, pay attention here, it will clip off if it's far too big. So that's one way to do it. So, I'm just putting a value, but imagine you want something else. So we could do more things, but here is the point I want to make earlier. It is, you can see here, the order of this will be dependent on the order of this one in chronological order, or from high to low, meaning it will not look at this here and the data set where it is. For example, if I put make this 25, let's make this 12, and I'll put this 25, I'll save that and refresh. The value here is still 25. You can see it reshapes itself. But if I scroll down here, it's still considered it as an index number one, meaning it is being calculated in such a way and reordered from high to low. This is, or this could become a problem. For example, if I do this, let me show you. It's a constant, and then let's say here values, and then all I'm going to do here is simple say here. One, two, uh, so let's type that out. Three, four, five, six, and we had another one that is number seven. Semi column here, save that, and then refresh. All right, so no, this doesn't show yet because we need to grab this and I want to put it in here now. So, for example, we're going to say here another okay, uh, uh, value. So you put in here this value, and then what I want to do here within this value, I will say here this, and then I'm going to grab here because this is an array. I want to grab the specific value in there. So when I want to do that, I'll just say your data index, which is zero, or whatever that would be. But then of course here CTX dot data index. If I save this now, refresh, you can see here it really orders them on the same structure. It doesn't understand that this is basically index number one, which would move here, while number 12 would be index zero. Remember, zero is uh, because uh, in an array, it's zero based calculation. So that is the only thing you have to reconsider. Of course, there's a way to do that is with uh, index of to search where in the index or which index uh, value or position it is in the array, but that's a more more advanced topic, I will skip that for now. So this is just a heads up regarding to this topic.